federal investigators are working together to try to find out, and they aren't just asking for cooperation. They are serving search warrants. Fox 11 has obtained a copy of the death certificate here, and it lists Pacific View Mortuary behind me as the agency that is handling those funeral arrangements for the Bryant family. In other news, the U.S. is beefing up security at its embassy in Iraq. The sister of Clippers forward Kawhi Leonard has been charged with the murder of an elderly woman at the Pechanga Resort and Casino in Temecula. And the Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission meeting was called tonight in South L.A. to try to give the community some answers, possibly make sense of what happened involving the shooting of a 16-year-old boy. But as you might imagine, things quickly escalated to anger with several heated exchanges. The catastrophic wildfires in California this year have been some of the most destructive in the state's history, taking lives, communities, and putting the ecosystem at risk. You know, Kobe Bryant was only 41 years old. He was with the Lakers for 20 years. He led the team to five NBA championships. He was also an Oscar winner, just a cultural icon. Officials gave that briefing within the past hour, upping that death toll to 18. The number missing now stands at six. Former Vice President Joe Biden holds a modest lead in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination with Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren not far behind him. <laughs> wow, he's funny and so inspirational. Now, the crowd was so large, Carter ended up giving two Bible lessons to about 700 people in all. The former president was so popular, some people even lined up early, Laura, in sleeping bags to guarantee a seat inside the church. And a very touching talk that he gave, yeah, right? Yeah, he's, he's incredible. Fox's prison break is coming back to TV. I know so many fans are excited about this, but it's getting a movie-style premiere this weekend in Austin, Texas. In case you didn't know it, this is the time when young men and women are packing up their rooms, leaving tearful parents behind and heading off to college. Luckily, I'm about 12 years away from that one. <laughs> but for one young man named Alec Foster, the journey has been one of survival and perseverance after he was struck by bullet fragments as an infant. In fact, in the Inland Empire, there have been 15 accidents involving the use of nitrous oxide, or NAS as it's called, in the past six months alone. Well, this winter's heavy rains are gifting Southern California with the best wildflower season in decades. Absolutely incredible. Fox 11 photographer Kevin Horton found some people prancing through the poppies out near Lake Elsinore today. I have a little surprise for you. I want to introduce you to my good friend Blake Shelton. Happy birthday to you and congratulations. Give oh my goodness. I'm Give giving him a hug. hug. All right, here you go. <laughs> we are back out here live on the red carpet. There is Simon Cowell. You know, it's been an emotional night for Simon. I had the chance to speak with him a short time ago, and you know, he was really rooting for Michael Ketterer. Um, he says he felt an instant connection with him. And the good news is, breaking news, you heard it here first, Simon Cowell will be working with Michael Ketterer immediately. Um, they're going to work on putting some music out right away. Scientists are putting it in historic terms, saying it could be the worst drought in 1,200 years. Will Carr has more on that study. Okay, it was a start, right? Yeah, <laughs> just a little tiny bit, right? It's Christmas time. It's that time of year again uh, right. to get our presents. Are you still struggling with your Christmas list? Uh, I always have trouble with this. <laughs> you just don't know what to get the movie or TV buff in your life. What's Hollywood's idea of the perfect Christmas gift? A DVD of an old movie or a television show. I like it too, Steph. Absolutely, indeed. You know, they're great for binge viewing in case you missed popular shows like The Sopranos, Batman, or even Mr. Ed. Adam Housley has some shopping tips. Taking a cue from Pharrell Williams, having mm -hmm. a good attitude at work makes everyone happier, don't you think? I think so, I agree. <laughs> Guess what? We're out of time. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. And I am actually standing in front of the home where the family lives. And this neighborhood can really be described as a quiet suburban neighborhood. And that is why many neighbors were shocked and stunned to learn about this literal house of horrors. And tonight, everyone is asking one question. Why? It's actually shocking. A sentiment echoed by many neighbors in this Paris subdivision who can't believe the atrocities authorities say went on behind closed doors. Every time I walk past their home, it's, it's desolate. It just looks uh, scary. If you lived in close proximity, you knew that there was something that just kind of, but not to that, nothing like that. Kimberly Milligan moved here two and a half years ago and was told the family across the street had 12 children. You never saw a bike in the front yard. You never saw a skateboard, a scooter. You never saw that. 
The home on Muir Woods Road, owned by 57 year old David Turpin, seen here in a mugshot, alongside his 49 year old wife Louise. The couple arrested on multiple counts of child abuse after officials say they starved and tortured their children. A neighbor's security camera captured Riverside County Sheriff's deputies outside the family's home Sunday morning. Authorities led there by a 17 year old who reportedly escaped and called 911. Inside, authorities say they found 12 other siblings, ages 2 to 29, being held captive, many of them emaciated and chained to their beds, living in darkness and filth. And when I hear that, it, see, I get tear eyed because it's just so sad. Why would parents have kids or why would people have kids just to treat them like that? This is a picture of the family in happier times. It was posted in 2016 on the couple's joint Facebook page during a vow renewal ceremony in Las Vegas. A video was also posted on the chapel's YouTube page. You made some promises to love, to honor, to cherish, to protect each other. The family reportedly fell on hard times in 2011 and filed for bankruptcy. David Turpin had worked as an engineer for Northrop Grumman. His name is also registered with the Department of Education as the principal of Sandcastle Day School, operating out of the home. Neighbor Milligan says she only saw the children a few times and described one encounter as odd. These children, I think the ones that we saw, who I believe are the ones in their 20s, socially, mentally, emotionally, they are not in their 20s. And we understand that the children were taken into protective custody and they are being treated at an area hospital for their injuries. As for those parents, they remain behind bars tonight. Uh, they are each facing nine counts of torture, 10 counts of child endangerment, and each of them are being held on $9 million bail. I'm still in shock. Both yeah. of us are. Yeah. Connie and Bob Vargo have waited 33 long years to see their son's killer brought to justice. I can't believe it. I mean, we walked around this house for going, oh my God, I can't believe it. I, I just can't, you know, it's, it's hard to comprehend. It was a cold case that haunted this family and Pomona police for more than three decades. Six-year-old Jeff Vargo was riding his bike in his neighborhood like he often did two days before the 4th of July in 1981 when he disappeared. We went to call him for dinner, couldn't find him. I called up and down the neighborhood, came in. I says, I can't find Jeffy. And then, then I walked up there behind the house is right here and that's when I found his bicycle and then I knew oh something's yeah, that happened a, that to was him. a terrible that a was, terrible instant the family called police the little boy's body was found the next day in this Pomona neighborhood which was under construction at the time after decades with few leads investigators finally got the break they needed thanks to modern technology DNA from the crime scene matched this man 53 year old Kenneth Rasmussen a convicted child sexual predator living in Idaho. News of the arrest brought up old wounds for the Vargos. Honestly, a lot of hate, a lot of hate for him. And how could somebody like that take away a little six-year-old boy? Just unbelievable why he, how he could do that. The family still lives in the same house and has managed to pick up the pieces and move on. But the scope of their loss is ever present. Jeffrey never had a chance to do anything that that he was supposed to do, that any other kid would do. He, he just robbed us of it. And the couple says while news of Rasmussen's arrest won't bring back their son, they hope it will protect other young children from suffering the same fate. Glad that someone is finally caught and hopefully he never will hurt anyone else ever, ever again. Now, Rasmussen is being held in jail in Sandpoint, Idaho. Pomona police are working with officials in Idaho to extradite him back here to Southern California. Christine, tragic is certainly an understatement. Just in the last few hours, we learned that one of the nuns involved in this case collapsed and died today during a court proceeding related to the case. 89-year-old Catherine Rose Holzman spoke to us just hours earlier in what we now know was her final interview. We own the property which was stolen. And I'm sorry, but um, I just can't sit back and let that happen.
pulling no punches. Sisters Rita Callanan and Catherine Rose Holzman speaking out for the first time since an LA County judge ruled against them, clearing the way for the Los Angeles Archdiocese to sell their Los Feliz convent to singer Katy Perry. You have stolen the property of the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart. Please, Archbishop, do what is right in your heart. The sisters have lived at the eight acre property since 1973 and say they have documents proving they are the rightful owners. They recently released a documentary to tell their side of the story. They wanted to sell the property to local businesswoman Dana Hollister, who had plans to turn it into a boutique hotel. We asked her to save us to buy the property. She had nothing to do with forcing herself on us. But last fall, a jury found Hollister guilty of malice and fraud for allegedly interfering with the sale of the property. She was ordered to pay 15 million in damages to the Los Angeles Archdiocese and Katy Perry's lawyers. Hollister filed for bankruptcy and for now, the judge has put all proceedings on hold. We're trying to get out to the public and tell them, look, what is being done to Dana Hollister is absolutely wrong. The judge was wrong. The poor jury, didn't they even admit? They didn't know what was going on. They admitted it afterward. Because they didn't get both sides of the story. In fact, the sisters say the case never should have gone to local court in the first place, that their convent is under the direct control of the Vatican and has never been a part of the L.A. Archdiocese. The nuns say they are now appealing to Pope Francis directly to give them back their convent. We have an agreement with Rome. It's in writing, and it says that if there are any disputes, they are to be settled in Rome. And they're also making a plea to Katy Perry herself. And to Katy Perry to please stop. It's not doing anyone any good except hurting a lot of people. Prophetic words indeed. Now we did reach out to the diocese here. They tell us that they did not feel comfortable commenting on the case uh, given what they've just learned about the passing of Catherine Rose. Uh, the nuns, by the way, they were in court supporting Dana Hollister for her bankruptcy proceeding. Uh, as far as the sisters as well, they've also set up a website and a GoFundMe page, and they're asking for the public's help. We're live in downtown LA. Stephanie Stanton, Fox 11 News.